Hello viewers, regular viewers will know that I think that atmospheric electricity is extremely important to a lot of different types of animals um, and plants and well the whole world around us really. So for example um, I believe that plants are not, not, plants and their leaf systems are not about collecting sunlight for photosynthesis but are actually collecting atmospheric electricity um, from, from the breeze. Uh, and using that to power their water pumping from the soil. So um, trees and plants are basically atmospheric electricity pumps, in a sense. And then the birds and other flying uh, animals and insects, um, I believe, use the atmospheric electricity. So they collect the charge and use it in, in their wing systems to achieve uh, flight. And I was thinking about spiders, because spiders... Um, they spin their webs. Sometimes they, they seem to deliberately spin their webs in wide open spaces where they seem designed to catch the breeze. Um, and and I was just wondering, you know, whether there was any kind of uh, use of the atmospheric electricity that I could find in spiders' webs. So I started looking around um, for any kind of evidence or uh, videos on the on the subject. So here I've just collected together a few of the things that I found. So this one's just simply, this is not, this isn't anything to do with electricity, just showing you a spider at work. Um, and they are pretty smart creatures uh, and extremely skilled and their webs are very intricate and carefully designed. And so you'd expect as well as being carefully designed that they're extremely carefully positioned. Um, Anyway, this spider is doing a very cool job, um, very elaborate bit of web building he's doing there. And in the next clip, which is coming up soon, I think what we're going to see is an, a Costa Rican spider. So check out the Costa Rican spider web and all of the stuff that appears to be going on in it. And just see if you think this could be some kind of electrical effect. Have a look. Check it out. That's pretty crazy, huh? Reminds me a little bit of one of those um uh one of those plasma ball things, you know, that you can run your fingers over. All those colours. So that is just a spider web in Costa Rica. Um but it's extremely trippy. And very very beautiful and look look how many different colors are going on in it so that to me just looks a little bit a little bit like there could be something electrical going on there not necessarily conclusive but it's quite interesting anyway I think I've never seen a spider's web like that I went to Costa Rica actually actually but um, I didn't see uh, I didn't see a spider's web like that, sadly, because it's very, very cool. I'd love to see one there. Not sure if the spider's at home. I think he's there in the middle. I can't quite tell. Anyway, this next clip shows um, a spider's web being uh, attracted using an electrically charged uh, metal object. So this does show that the actual that the that the web um, uh, is charged and has some quite interesting electrical properties. In fact, some researchers think that the uh, spider's web uh, is actually that when a fly uh, comes to the web that there can be an electrical spark, like an electrical zap. I don't know if you can see anything here. This is some this is some very high um uh very high speed camera footage. Shows a little zap going on as the uh as the fly hits the web. So 
So it could be that the web just gets charged up um, and that then it basically an unsuspecting fly gets near it, gets zapped and stunned um, and then gets caught up in it. But anyway, I found this little kind of uh, piece of footage about it. The same phenomenon that gives us a good zap when we touch a doorknob might be what helps a spider catch a fly. A new study out of UC Berkeley may point to an evolutionary adaptation of web design that takes advantage of the charge of static electricity created when a flying insect flaps its wings. A buzzing bug can generate hundreds of volts of positive electrostatic charge from air friction, a trait that helps bees extract pollen from flowers. Spider webs, the research suggests, have a negative electrical charge and have developed a finer spiral silk, more flexible than its spoke silk, to aid in the electrical ensnaring. In the lab, high-speed cameras captured dead insects zapped with a positive charge as they were dropped into a web, which can be seen deforming and touching an electrified insect before it lands attracted to its charge. The negatively charged web may also attract dust and pollen, a possible reason spiders reweave their nets every day. Here is a weird observation of spider web that has a that how it reacts to magnetic fields and stuff. They've got Little pieces of hair or spider web tend to have have some sort of a magnetic thing, kind of like a balloon, and they get stuck on things. And it just flew up there because I put my finger near it. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. Okay, I'm going to try it again. That's just from putting my finger near it. And it goes back down and it hangs. Oh, now it's going for the camera. Okay. It acts, it moves almost like it's alive, but it's just, it's just magnetic field and electricity doing that. I find it very interesting when it does this. See, it moves almost like a snake. Seems attracted to the camera a little bit. Now it's blowing way up there. I think that's... I'm not sure what, why it's going way up there. But it's kind of cool. Okay, now I'm going to stick my finger in it again. Look. Went further up. This time I've actually managed to touch it this time. But it still moves away from my finger. Now. Sorry, you can't really see it there, can you? Part of it is wind, part of it is electricity. The heater's blowing, and I think that's one of the things that's making it go up. That even if you put your finger near it, it'll move in other ways. Like it'll. Oh, now it's grabbed my finger. Part of it is the wind, 
Part of it is electricity. It's moving away from my finger. It stuck itself way up there because didn't want to touch my finger. I don't know if you can see it now. Oh, out again. Now I've just touched it too fast and so I didn't have time to move away. I don't think it's reacting quite as quickly now. I wonder if... Not very good pictures of this. It's hard to tape spiderweb people. It's not reacting too much. If I move it by, let's see if I can get it close up. Now it's kind of more attracted. That's weird. If I move it away, it slowly falls back down. Now it's moving away now. Okay. That's weird. Ah, you can't see it there at all. That is my weird observation of spiderweb. I'm pretty sure that there that you could probably make better tapes if you have a camera that will actually focus on the spiderweb, but I don't think there are very many cameras that will focus on the spiderweb unless you get a really, really good at looking at little details when this is more for filming movies and stuff. Not really, not like real movies, just things at home. And if you have witnessed this, then good for you too. Anyway, there's not very much um, information about uh, spider web electrical effects that I can find around, but um, I'll keep looking. And it does seem like they, there is some kind of uh, electrical activity going on with them, and it would make perfect sense. I mean, the webs are, you know, the webs and then positioning them in a somewhere breezy um, seems clearly uh, a design optimized to use atmospheric electricity. So it'd be very surprising to me if they didn't make use of it. But um, you know, I'm going to hopefully find more evidence uh, later on. And I'll leave you now with this uh, epic battle between uh, well, a fly and a web. Well, it's not really that epic. I mean, it's just completely fucked. But um, it's quite interesting. <laughs>